Hi everyone, uh, this is the SIBA call for April 2nd, 2019. Um, what we have on the agenda today are some notes on the SIBA lockdown um, and um, what was covered there. And then I wanted to go over JIRA as we haven't been over that um, since the beginning of last month. Um, so to start, um, uh, there was a lockdown with the Volta and SIBA. Um, uh, teams in Huntsville. Uh, we had about 40 people. It was uh, pretty well attended. Um, it was a good mix of people, and and the and um, we covered a lot of topics. Uh, there's a if you, look the, if you look in the call agendas, um, uh, there's a link to a, a, a directory that has a bunch of um, documents that were generated during that time. Uh, people's um, some of these are Volta and SIBA related. Um, some are just Volta. Some are, um, I think, all of them are are, um, are relevant to Volta. Um, some people uh, stepped up to take on some things. Um, so uh, David Bainbridge uh, talked about standardization of message formats. Um, also, um, Andy Rubin and and I am going to look at uh, filtering of some of the messages on the Kafka bus for, um, uh, especially for the FCAPS work and uh, making sure that we have a solution that meets um, all the different service providers' needs. Um, so how we turn these actually into sort of working groups, um, I think is up to those uh, people who started that. So uh, feel free to, if you're interested in these topics, um, to reach out um, to the people who are working on them. And um, other than that, there's a bunch of, um, it, it would behoove you to, um, look over um, some of these documents if you um, weren't following the uh, the meeting um, when it was being broadcast last week. Um, right, and then back, we're going to continue to add, I think there are a couple of the presentations missing from this folder. Um, is this folder open, uh, share, shareable with uh, everybody? Yes, it is. It's a subdirectory of, okay. of the SIPA generalized folder that um, everyone should have access to. If you don't have access to this directory, let me know and I can I can give you access to it. Okay, then uh, maybe on the on the Volta side, I'll share this link also. Great, thank you. Okay. Um, alrighty, well, I'm going to move from there. Uh, the next thing we had on the on the call agenda was uh, reviewing uh, items that we completed in JIRA um, since the March 5th meeting. We had, um, we've only had one meeting since then um, because of the um, we had other uh, things that were going on that caused the meetings to get canceled. So um, if we jump into JIRA, um, we completed since uh, the 5th um, 38 items um, to give an overview of where we're at. Um, uh, the next section of, of SIBA 2.0 uh, currently has um, 14 items still in it, and the SIBA 2.0 release has about 80 items in it. So um, next for SIBA 2.0 should probably be done with, uh, within this month, and then um, getting through these other items. Um, uh, will be the next target. Um, there's a document that I think Sarov shared um, at the last meeting we had of the overall SIBA 2.0 roadmap um, that may also have see some updates uh, since since the lockdown. Um, but as Sarov is out this week, um, uh, we'll probably cover that either next week or the following week. Um, so to go back to the things that were completed, um, I think the first item is CBA 542, creating a TT workflow driver in M. Uh, Andy? Yeah, so we're starting to flesh out the Turk Telecom workflow in SIBA. And this um, piece was just kind of creating the scaffolding that we need to do that. So there's a module in NEM, which is the workflow driver that's listening for events and, and causing things to happen when, when it sees them. So um, this... Uh, was just basically creating that that basic module in in them, and that'll be a platform that we'll use to to uh, as I said, flesh out the workflow. So another part of this was sort of helping break down some of the other assumptions that were made in the AT and T driver. 
did that or has that been really called out yet? Um, not really. So I think we're still waiting for as we find places where Turk Telecom workflow diverges from AT and T workflow. Then I think we'll need to kind of go in and try to generalize things that we've done in kind of a one-off manner um, in in the AT and T workflow driver. So um, I guess there was a little bit of that, a little bit of refactoring of some of the the uh, Tosca mm -hmm. that we've been using to to set things up. But um, yeah, I, I think we're we still have some work to do there. Okay, thanks, Andy. And the next item is yours too. It's um, five twenty nine. It's even a box eliminate. Need to remove app armor. Oh yeah. So. Um, People who have tried to use Siba in a box, one of the things that they've frequently tripped over is that App Armor um, in the default configuration prevents you from doing things like uh, running DH client inside the, the RG container. Um, so um, even though I'm not an App Armor expert, I tracked down like how to configure App Armor so that it wouldn't throw that error and um, so hopefully people will be have an easier time setting up Siba in a box. Okay, thanks, Andy. Um, uh, Two eighty one is um, I think something related to um, uh, uh, abstract OLT. Is uh, is Don Newton on? Okay, sounds like he isn't. Um, so there's a, I, I think, um, I think this is just handling this use case, which looks like it was done um, or was done early on. So I probably was done even before the end of last uh, set of, or before the fifth. Um, the next item was SIBA 313. Hardik worked on this. Um, Hardik, do you have comments on 313? Yeah, uh, Isaac, yeah. So uh, prior to this, uh, this is basically for that R code uh, subscriber uh, service model. So the previous validations were only that we are taking the CTAC should be on an ONT device. Uh, what this Jira covers is uh, to check the combination of STAC and CTAC uh, should be unique across. So the new validation has been added. Uh, so whenever you configure a subscriber with an STAC CTAC, so now we validate if that is the subscriber with the same stack uh, don't have the same C tag also. So the combination is getting validated. Okay. And with this, I actually have also raised a Jira 548. Uh, so currently, if the user is not uh, actually configuring uh, S tag and C tag values uh, while configuring the subscriber, so the generation logic is not uh, optimized. So for that, I have raised a new work item, which currently uh, Vignesh is working on, and that should be in uh, a couple of days. Okay, I'm going to add that to the CBA 2.0 release, um, even though it might get done before before then. Um, and if the and this is linked to that um, 313, um, so relates to is it 31? Uh -uh. Three one three. Okay. All righty. So that yeah. that will be up yeah. as we see it um, as 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 it gets done. Um, hey, um, Zach. One quick question the, for the first one: the TT workflow um, is the multi TCON will affecting the the whatever already been done because I think there's some uh, further understanding between the TT and then Saurav, right? Or it's just a technology profile related. So the the SIBA 542 that I talked about, um, I think is is kind of outside the scope of of what of what you're talking about. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done at different layers in order to fully realize the TT workflow. This is okay. just the um, some some kind of framework that I needed to put in XOS in order to um, accept events from the Kafka bus and and generate events when when things are happening. So it's it's just one small piece of the larger puzzle. Okay, good. 
Okay, uh, thanks, Hardik. Um, the next item was SIBA uh, 527 XOS service tests. Um, yeah, so um, uh, there has been a uh, test service inside of XOS core that's been developed. Um, the functionality for that is to test the XOS core synchronizer and framework. So previously there was a test gap here where we weren't really testing that, but rather just going through and testing that every model has, um, every, every model API has been generated and those APIs work. So this fixes that test gap. Um, and so we got this implemented um, and it's running on every check-in for um, changes to the XOS core. Uh, so this was done. Um, and so this this covers the in-service software upgrade of of services um, and tests that the functionality we have for the um, actually performing the data migration works properly. Is that correct, or is this a different? No, there's there's, there's a different test um, for that and a different job. The data migration stuff gets tested um, as a part of the XOS unit test. Okay. Um, there's also a separate uh, test that Scott has written for data migrations and um, service upgrades. This is just um, t uh, testing the synchronizer framework and making sure that the model policies are working as expected. Oh, okay. That makes sense. And um, 473, um, new job. Oh, uh, yeah. So um, we created a new job that builds the um, OpenOLT um, Debian package. Um, this is so that every time there's a check-in um, to the open OLT driver, uh, we go ahead and build it, package it, and then push it to one of our OLTs. Previously, we were just getting um, pre-built um, packages from, from Shad and testing those periodically or, or upgrading those periodically, but now we have an automated way to, uh, whenever there's a new check-in, we'll build it and push it to the OLT, and whenever we're advised to um, use the new version, then we're able to do that more easily. So, so th this is going to help out with that. Okay, thanks, Kailash. Um, the next few items are Mateo. Um, yeah. Four, five. So the the first to uh, create an API to um, operate on technology profile and uh, resource managers. Uh, they are marked as one fix because uh, after the Volta lockdown meeting, I had uh, some discussion about those uh, in um, people in the Volta community, and they are pushed directly in, in ETCD by design because their format can be very different. Um, so it, it will be very complicated to uh, to bind that format into a, uh, into a protobuf. Uh, and, and that's the reason why they are pushed to uh, ETCD. So I'm just going to stick with the decision that the Volta community made. Uh, and uh, I have two new items for those that are uh, to add the capability in, uh, in them to push that kind of information into the Volta ETCD. Then 549. Uh, we needed to update the dependencies uh, between the Onos application. Uh, mostly Kafka uh, was still depending on the released version of um, of Sadis, and the HCP L2 relay. There was a, a little mess in uh, in the way they are uh, they were referenced, and there were issues uh, in the, um, the job that published the snapshot version of the application. So the, all of that has been fixed. Uh, this was a very minor thing. Uh, there is a model in them that lets you shape the service graph. Uh, now it can have a priority, so in case you load more, uh, you can decide which one wins. And we added support uh, in XOS. I think this was uh, a joint effort between me and Zach. Uh, we added support in the XOS Migrate tool to uh, run outside of the repo tree structure, so that can be uh, used in, in different environment. 478 was just the rename of a folder. Um, people have been complaining about that being the only folder that was using an underscore in, uh, in all the, the repo tree, so we changed that. 
and uh, the last one was a very old uh, bug there was a uh, there was an issue in the GUI um, and when we were receiving too many too many notifi notification uh, it was consuming a lot of CPU and blocking the browser uh, okay. That has been improved. We tested uh, sending um, a thousand event uh, in two seconds and it didn't froze. So I think that's uh, still good enough for now. Okay, so I can probably close this other uh, issue that it duplicated, correct? Uh, yeah, correct. Okay, I'll go ahead and close that. Um, uh, I All righty, um, and then 505. Uh, this looks like... Um, two, two, two. Okay, um, there was an, um, <clears throat> an issue in, uh, in the subscriber validation uh, that was leading to this inconsistent state. Uh, so if you were removing... Um, and uh, the, the OLT to which the subscriber belonged before removing the, the subscriber itself, then the subscriber was uh, was stuck. Now, uh, now that has been fixed. Okay, so this was like a dependency thing that needed to be resolved in the right order. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. But um, to explain a little more, you have uh, you need to check the dependencies only if the subscriber uh, is active. Okay. Because uh, the dependency is on the ONU, and it, it's really a dependency only if the subscriber is active. If it's pre provision it doesn't really matter. But that check on the pre provision was made only on the save call and not on the delayed call. So. Okay. Thank you, Matteo. Um, sure. Siva 146, <laughs> uh, this is something I created, but Matt worked on. Um, is authentication over the 4093 VLAN. I think this is very specific to the AT&T workflow. Um, if, I'm, I'm assuming that um, uh, other people are not, or that the foundry isn't on, so um, we'll I'll move on from here. Um, Siva 306, OLT app should be aware of OLTs after they are removed for, from status. Um, I don't think Sarov's on, but Matteo, you reported this. Do you have any comments on it? Um, yeah, I think uh, it was um, as simple as the OLT application wasn't caching uh, the subscriber information it was using. So if for uh, any reason uh, um, the subscriber was going away from upstream, then there were issues in managing the, uh, like in removing the subscriber because the data were not there anymore. Okay. Um, the next few items are, I think, related to XOS. Um, and Scott, you handled these? Sure. So this first one was the convenience methods were stored in um, in a Python library directory, and that caused issues with different versions of Pythons, including uh, Python 3.x. Uh, so we moved that, I think, to var run xos, some, something like that. So it's it's in a it's in a Python neutral location now. Um, <clears throat> data migration tests not working. So this was related to the test that. Um, uh, one of the sets of tests that Kailash just described. So we have data migration tests that test the um, um, in-service upgrade. Um, those actually broke due to some recent refactoring of the XOS synchronizer. So this was getting that back to uh, working again. Um, <clears throat> installed Network X is incompatible with Python 2.7. So the version of Network X that we're using uh, we used a loose uh, version matching with that, and it changed externally, um, and the external change did not work with Python 2.7. Um, I think we we concluded the issue was on on their end, that they weren't doing their semantic versioning properly, but our solution on our end was to lock down a firm version. So I, I've had some back and forth with, um, with them. I, I made an issue on their tracker. Um, it turns out that I, I don't think they had a, as strict of a versioning 
discipline as we expected. So um, I think we need to pay attention to that going forward when we're specifying these sorts of things. Yeah, I think, you know, we'll, we'll have to consider that for all external packages that we can, you know, we can control our own versioning discipline, but we can't control anyone else's. Um, right. Yeah, so we'll think about that some more. Um, removing Ansible from XOS Synchronizer. So um, the XOS Synchronizer, it's had um, the support to run Ansible sync steps since its inception. Uh, but the only synchronizer that used that was um, OpenStack, and OpenStack is currently not supported uh, by the synchronized or the OpenStack service is currently in an unsupported state while we're upgrading it. So we've we've uh, we eliminated that Ansible support from the XOS synchronizer, thus reducing its complexity and reducing the uh, image build time and image size. Um, Next up is implement the test service. So this was um, the service that Kailash talked about. Um, he did the robot version of it. Um, I did the, um, the, the XOS portion of it. And this is a synchronizer that lives inside of the um, XOS repository uh, with the goal being that we can now test the XOS repository without requiring or depending on any SEBA services so that the lifecycle of, of XOS is not directly coupled to to the life cycle of all of these external services and they can evolve separately um, so we implemented that service it tests a variety of different fields um, it tests some model policy stuff and then and then kailash's robot test will ensure that it all works in an end-to-end -end manner um, and i think this is altogether this cleaning up of, of testing is significantly um, sped up uh, Jenkins validation of, of the XOS repo. Um, do I have one more? Yeah, the XOS Kafka library cannot be imported until after config has been initialized. I think um, the Kafka library, it initialized the logger in a global variable um, that required config to be loaded before Kafka, creating this uh, dependency between um, module imports that was was unfortunate so we we fixed that so that that dependency isn't there um okay i've got more update helm charts to use xos 3.0.0 that was just a release thing we released um xos 3.0 that was uh, updating helm charts do, do you um, know, um i i know larry was working on it but do you know if we have an xos 3.0 release document I am not aware of one, and I would I would think Larry would have you know run it by me when he finalized it, and or tried to get my input to add more stuff to it. So I don't I don't know if we have one, but I will I will ping Larry on that and see. Okay, um, I, I think the next um, the next few of these uh, through like four twenty two are all related to that three release. Yeah, so removing the synchronizer framework, that was the 3.0 release. Um, dead code removal is just getting rid of junk. Um, additional validation on X proto fields. Um, that was um, adding checking to the uh, XOS Gen X tool so that it would um, track when a person sets options that are incompatible um, with the type of field. Uh, so, for example, setting a minimum value on a string yield or setting a maximum length on an integer. Um, also, various issues between required and optional and blank. And it, it sorted out a bunch of things where people had, had entered incorrect X proto over the years and it was creating issues. Um, database migration and NEM upgrade of XOS services. Um, that must have been, um, this is the epic that, that we oh, this is the whole back. epic. So yeah, this, this is where we crossed off the whole database migration, um, service upgrade thing. So uh, I think we probably talked about all of these tasks before the last meeting. And this was probably just, uh, closing out the epic. Boy, I've got a lot of these clean up core X proto. <laughs> Um, this was, uh, yeah, this was a large cleanup of um, models that weren't interesting anymore in the in the core. A lot of them OpenStack related. Uh, so this sort of streamlined all of the modeling, uh, cleaned it up, got rid of useless stuff. Um, the 514 goes with 457. 
um, relative paths. So there was something when you uh, when you used a path in the XMS migrate tool that was based on dot dot, um, it would do the wrong thing. So this fixed that. Yeah, I, I think this is related to Mateo's earlier thing of the XOS, um, the, what was it, the parameters, um, XOS yeah. Servicer, making it so that you can, so that the XOS um, migrate was not specific to our a directory tree that we have. So, um, okay, Scott, thank you. Um, so to move on, uh, CBA 272. Um, uh, I'm not sure how is Selva is Selva on. That would be useful. You can call Selva. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you can call me Selva. Perfect. So this is basically a script added by us. Uh, like uh, if it is added as part of the CRB installation steps. So we are checking to see if the ports are already in use and if there is a container which already uses is running on the port and then try to uh, find that all the ports are free before using the system for installation again, right? So uh, this was added by uh, uh, like a script separately and then added as a part of make install for CF setup. Okay, thanks, Selva. Um, this is this a, a, is more of a reliability. Right, because sometimes um, Siba in a box was bailing to come up because something else was bound to one of the ports that, that it was expecting to use. And you wouldn't find out about this until you got pretty far into the install. So Selva's changes um, do that check at the beginning, and if the ports are available, it reserves them and if it's not available then it just fails right away with a message saying what the problem is so yeah thanks Silva for picking that up okay um moving on uh siba 539 um ponsum onu not being disabled so is shad on i don't see him on um andy reported this this is uh related to how ponsum functions um yeah so so shad fixed this for me in in volta master there was an issue where um you could you would disable the ponsim onu but yet traffic would still go through it as if it wasn't disabled um and and the 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 issue that shad fixed was that um the flows were no longer being flushed from the Ponsim ONU when it got disabled. But that was really the only method that it had of stopping traffic from flowing through. Um, I guess probably in a normal ONU, there's some different method, you know, actually physically shut down an interface or there's some global lock or something, but Ponsim is not sophisticated. So it relied on the flows being flushed to stop the traffic from going. So, so in master, then are the flows being flushed now, or is there some other mechanism that's being used to stop this? Oh, it, the the flows are being flushed again. Okay. Alrighty. Um, moving on. Uh, Suchitra um, had four fifty three. Suchitra on. Yes, I am. Um, so this is a uh, bug that was reported, and I uh, verified this bug, and it's it's working fine now. Uh, the issue was whenever there was a ON, uh, ONU when it came back up, it used to go into OMCI admin lock lock state, but now the issue has been fixed. It doesn't go into the lock state anymore. So there are two scenarios that have been tested here. So one is the disconnecting the pawn fiber and then reconnecting back and checking the status of this ONU and the flows and uh, all the when the procedure and also the other uh, other was like powering off and on the on the ONU. So in both the scenarios, uh, this problem um, doesn't seem to happen anymore, so it is fine. So I was just validating this bug. Okay, thanks, Ujidra. Um, see, but a quick I... question. So, so if, the, if the ONU is locked prior to the uh, reboot, does it come back up as locked in that case? 
the ONU comes back up in the state that we wanted, like the uh, ideal state after it comes back to active state, it should be like in the ONCA flows pushed state. So once it comes back, then the validation happens. I mean, the all the other forward the validations are all good. Right, but if if it was locked before it was rebooted, it was still is it still locked? Is it still in the locked state after it comes back up, or is it? Is it now no, unlocked? Okay. Yeah, it is unlocked. Yes, it's fine. Okay. So, but don't we want to maintain the state that it was in before the reboot? Um, so, is the sequence of events um, the the ONU gets locked? Somebody powers it on and off, and it should stay locked. Is that what you're? Um, yeah. Um, but according to the bug, the fix, what we verified was that the earlier state was locked, but then when it comes back, um, I mean, the issue was that it always stayed in the lock state, even though it was like active, which, which mm -hmm. happened. Right, it, was this is an, an, it, it was going to an invalid state. Right. But that's the case when it was unlocked to start with, right? So it was unlocked, rebooted. And it comes back up as locked was the bug is what I'm hearing, right? But the other, the other use case would be if it was locked before it was restarted, it should still be locked when it comes back. But currently, I, I what we noticed was it it shows up in the ONCA flows pushed state, and with that, all uh, all the validations are happening fine. But when it is in the OMCA lock state. Then um, it 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 was it was not correct state. So does okay. the rest of the workflow happen? Um, was was this that the workflow wasn't happening properly? Um, yes. yes. Okay. The workflow was not happening because it was in the lock state, and then once it comes back to the OMCA flows push state, then the rest of the validations happen, and then you are able to ping from end to end. Uh, so, so what this basically does is, when it gets brought back up, it 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 goes into a state where um, that's it goes into that's a scenario where it gets all its state reapplied. So, if it was locked, it would it would eventually arrive at a locked state. Correct. Yes. Yes, okay. it was like going to an invalid loop state, so which is not correct. Right. So I, I, that makes sense. Um, so eventually it reaches the correct state, whereas previously it would possibly in an, in, be in an incorrect state if the previous state was um, was provisioned and whitelisted. Yes. Okay, that, make, that makes sense. Does that answer your question, Sean? Uh, I think so. <laughs> okay. But, yeah, um, I guess, yeah. If if we need to test it or do some other tests, um, let if you could make that uh, make a note on that, or and either talk to Sujitra or, or someone, that would be useful. Yeah, you can. Okay. Look and then also in the bug, what I have mentioned was um, after uh, performing these two scenarios, the uh, full workflow states of the ONU OLT and uh, from end to end have been captured. So if you could also take a look at that. From the Volta and also Siva states, and you see if there is incorrect that we need to retest it again. Yeah, please do, do let me know. But uh, we validated with Saurav also on this. Okay, thanks, Suchitra. All right. Um, the next items, a few items are mine. Um, first one was Siva 559 that Kubernetes was failing to install um, in Siva in a box. So, how um, CV in the box set up Kubernetes was it used a apt repo provided by um, uh, I think by the upstream Kubernetes project. Um, the specific version 1.12.4 uh, stopped, they stopped having a dependency. Um, so updating to 1.12.7 resolved that. This also came up in our uh, uh, QA pipeline. So basically everywhere has been updated to 1.12.7. We haven't seen any breakage as a result of this um, uh, minor version upgrade. Um, 
CIPA 496 using libraries released on PyPy in the XOS containers. Um, this is part of the XOS release process. Um, so we now are building um, li the libraries for the synchronizer and various other components as on PyPy. Uh, and they get they get built, they get pushed to PyPy, then they get used in the other um, in the other synchronizers um, and internally in XOS components. So this is um, made it a lot easier to develop those components and to release um, release synchronizers. Um, so the 545, the 3.0 libraries, this was a just a versioning issue we ran into right when we jumped from 2.2 .2 to 3.0. Um, 449 was getting patch sets on Python coding standards. So um, we now have the ability to run Flake 8 and a few other things, and we did a pass over the core code so that it uh, it is Flake 8 clean. Flake 8 does both formatting checks and checks for things like including libraries you shouldn't, um, in uh, using referencing variable names that haven't been defined, a bunch of a bunch of other sort of lint and correctness checks. Um, and then uh, test CBA 450 was testing Python libraries in NEM using Tox. Um, Tox is a test runner. It does some things like multiple versions of Python testing. Um, so you can easily test against Python 2 and 3, um, which is important as Python 2 is end of life, end of the year. Um, also, uh, it does some things with um, randomization of data structure contents, specifically dictionaries, uh, which has found a lot of non-determinism in some of the code that we had. And this has helped work out and make um, our some, some portions of the NEM code more deterministic. So um, th those are all the things that have been done since the last review. Um, I think we'll probably end up doing another review in, in a couple of weeks um, or at, at most or probably next month. Um, so I'm going to move from here over into, uh, into our backlog. So first I wanted to look at what we have in progress. Um, a few items um, that, uh, that belong to Mateo. Um, Dave, can you speak to CBA 350? Do we still have Mateo? Doesn't sound, uh, doesn't sound like it. Okay. Um, can you put it later because I'm rushing to the train oh. to go to NS? Okay. Um, so. The, these are in progress. Uh, they're related to um, uh, the, how the SATA server um, interacts with NEM. Um, I'm assuming these are improvements to to the SATA server, and they're with bandwidth profile information. I'm, um, the next next one we had was uh, CBA 273, which is publishing hardware events and alerts and metrics. Um, this I think has come up. There's an email thread. Um, Jason provided some code for this, um, but there's talk of how this got split out, um, especially during the SIBA lockdown, whether Redfish would be used for pawn level statistics or just um, hardware and device level statistics. And I believe it was decided that the Redfish API would be used for um, uh, monitoring of underlying hardware, but not necessarily data plane level things like, like the pawn. Um, actually bringing this in and making a and um, getting this defined is probably going to involve um, working with both the uh, David Bainbridge's uh, work to make uh, to define the standards of the data message formats um, and also um, how it would get consumed um, by uh, either the NEM components or components that live above NEM um, like ONAP. Uh, the next item was 532, do not launch the AAA application in Onos. I think this is related to Elm workflow. Did somebody have a comment? Okay. So, so Mateo, I think, has been working on this, but since maybe we can't hear him, um, I, can, I can speak to it. So the Turk Telecom uh, workflow doesn't require... Um, 802.1x auth um, 
to create the, the subscriber. And so we don't want the Onos to launch the AAA app. But the problem that we had is that the Kafka app in Onos uh, requires the AAA app right now to in order to run. And so um, Teo was, was refactoring uh, that Kafka app in order to allow it to to not depend on specific other apps, but just um, be able to look at the environment and figure out what uh, apps were there, and then and then load the proper listeners. So I think I believe that patch is pretty much done, but um, I've tested it. It seems to to work, but um, it hasn't been merged yet. Okay, thanks, Andy. Um, Siva two hundred six. This is Scott's. Um, uh, yeah, so there's a total of, of six of these cases in the uh, NEM capabilities epic. Each one is dealing with a particular failure. Uh, so this one here deals with the failure where there's a break in the fiber cable between the OLT and the AG switch. Um, and it's basically about detecting that break, um, aggregating a bunch of information together, you know, the number of or the list of subscribers affected, the switch affected, the OLT affected. Um, and then generating an alarm on that. So that is uh, coming along. We have a couple patches in right now that do this. Um, this is sort of a a little bit of a proof of concept on this at, at this point, but I I think it's working out favorably for us. Um, we'll see. Maybe we can give a demo of that in a future meeting. Okay. Thanks, Scott. Um, so. Uh, 528 is updating the functional test cases to re reduce OLT deletes, I think, Suchitra? Yeah, so this uh, is an optimization of the uh, existing automated test scenarios that we have currently running on Jenkins. So earlier, what we used to have was for every scenario after we test, we used to clean up XOS objects. That, le that led to uh, too much overload of OLT reboots. and. Um, I Many times we were not able to get the OLT back or the OMU back into proper state. So that had been reduced by uh, optimizing the test cases. And this could be almost closed because I completely tested this as well. OK, thanks, Sujitra. Um, and the last one was a Helm chart for the Turk Telecom workflow. So, I Yeah, this has actually been been completed. I just forgot to, to check it off. OK. Um, but what this was is. So I, I mentioned earlier the the uh, XOS uh, module for that is going to be used to to as we flesh out the Turk Telecom workflow, and this was um, charts for loading that module, a new uh, workflow chart as well that that um, has contains some Tosca for configuring that module, um, and um, the the process of of creating that. That workflow chart um, required some some refactoring of of Tosca, as I, I briefly touched on earlier, because uh, there was some things like, for instance, the the AAA app getting loaded and configured. Previously, that had been done in kind of the global SIBA services chart that we expect all the workflows to load. But now we have a workflow that doesn't need that, and so um, I refactored things to pull that out and, and make it workflow specific rather than, than global for all workflows. Um, yeah, but that's done. I'll, I'll check off that, that item. Okay. Thanks, Andy. Um, we have a few items that haven't been, uh, work uh, that haven't been completed. One is adding REST API support for Volta 2.0. I think, um, I think, uh, Mateo is working on this. Uh, this is, um, setting up Envoy, um, to function against Volta. 2.0. Uh, the next issue um, I think is Kata's. It's uh, investigate uh, issue with authentication when 64 ONUs are simulated by BBSIM. So I think this is a scale issue, um, or there's an error either in ONOS or in um, or in in some other portion. So this is working out a bug um, related to that scale. Uh, technology profiles in NEM. This is assigned to Hardik. Do you, Hardik, do you have any comments on how, uh, what? It, uh, no, Zach, actually, just uh, an hour back only, I picked this item. 
so probably i'll be going through the sipa requirements and uh, in a day or two i'll check with the i need some guidance from uh, matteo and uh, sean how to go forward with this okay thank you hardik um sipa 550 uh, AAA app there's a null pointer exception with 32 or 64 on use i think this is related to the sipa 523 uh, yes it is so this is a bug that needs to be fixed and I think 551 is the same case. There's some sort of some sort of a bug that needs to be fixed related to the um, to that scale testing. Um, SIBA 556. I this is actually also done. Um, so the the issue here was the uh, Volta 1.x uh, latest <laughs> images on Docker Hub were being built. Their question. Um, so these these Docker Hub images had been uh, being built using the the auto build feature on Docker Hub, but this was taking a long time because there's a lot of dependencies between the Volta images, and so you needed to build them in a specific order. And because auto build is a free service, there's often a a big delay between. Uh, building one image and, and the next one. So I um, uh, changed this to use a Jenkins job to, to build the, the Volta images and just push them to Docker Hub instead. So so that's that's um, happening right now. So this is just the Volta core images, not the BBSim or, or other things or the Volta Go. That's right. It's only for things in the Volta repository. So if it has a separate repository, then it's getting built by whatever the old Other method means. was okay. that was building it. Okay, and SIBA 546, this is assigned to um, uh, this is assigned to you, Andy. Yep. So um, this is an issue that um, David Bainbridge reported. Uh, so he's got his own kind of testing environment that he's he's trying to bring up with, with Volta and the, the trellis fabric. And he noticed an issue that also applies to SIBA in a box where um, DHCP replies coming from the server were not being trapped at the egg switch as expected. This is just for SIBA in a box. In a normal plot, it was working in a expected way that they were trapped at the switch. Um, so I'm looking into that right now, but um, I think I'm making good progress on that and hopefully have this fixed maybe today or tomorrow. You're saying that in a physical deployment, this it is being trapped? Yeah, physical deployment okay. traps at the egg switch. And so the, the short answer for why it's not happening in SIBA in a box is um, SIBA in a box is using an old version of OpenB switch in Mininet that doesn't um, do Q and Q matching, but if you update that and configure it in the right way, then it works. That's right. You told me that. Sorry. <laughs> so well, for everybody else. <laughs> okay. Um, of these, it looks like only 550 and 551 are um, currently unassigned. Um, so I, but as um, I think Shad left both of those, I'll. I'll leave it to him to assign them or, or find um, somebody to assign them to. Um, so we have, what, 13 issues left in next for CBA 2.0, and then we can get into the C, the uh, larger CBA 2.0 epic. Um, we have, um, I'm not going to go over everything here because there are about 80 items, um, but I, I and, and we're also reaching the, the top of the hour. So I'm going to... Uh, just look at the items that are unassigned. So of that 79 items, 42 are not assigned. Um, if people are looking for uh, tasks to pick up, um, I would recommend going into the, the SIBA 2.0 version, um, searching by unassigned. Um, and then um, we, we'd really like to work with, um, especially um, if, you, if you need help uh, finding something to work on and, you, and you'd like to pick that up, um, uh, let us know, and um, we're going to start reaching out, um, especially to our newer partners, um, to help get these tasks covered. Um, they a, a lot of these are uh, FCAPs related, um, or uh, or uh, specific testing things like um, 
the 206 test and there are all these other cases that uh, Scott was working on or um, had had started on and, and wants to continue working on. Um, we have a few things related to ISSU and uh, database backup. Um, there's a, I believe I have a, another item um, that it's assigned to me that's going over that. We have some planning going on with that. Um, and some of them are just maintenance and, and bug fixes. Um, so probably in the next uh, in the next couple of weeks, we'll go over um, sort of the strategy and plan for for tackling these and getting them assigned and and uh, so that we can get these done for the 2.0 release. All right. Um, are there any other comments? Um, I'd, I'd also like to mention two other things. Um, the uh, this discussion on structured logging and, and other stuff, I, I think I'm going to uh, take that on, but that'll also um, go along with the other items that were discussed at uh, at the Seba and Volta lockdown in Huntsville. But um, I think next week I talked to the Kachengo guys. They, they were working um, as a part of the Ukraino project to get an ARM port of the Seba components, and they have a have um, a demonstration and um, wanted to discuss uh, their uh, sort of the process that they went into in getting uh, all of all of the NEM, Volta, and Onos components uh, working as a part of that uh, Ukraino work. Um, so I'm trying to arrange with them a time to to speak about that and uh, what what was easy, what was hard, that sort of thing. Um, so hopefully that'll be next week or the week after. Oh, alrighty. Um, if there aren't any other comments, I'm going to stop the recording. Um, thank you all. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye.